Welcome to Season 5 of Public Health On Call, a podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. I'm Joshua Sharfstein, Vice Dean for Public Health Practice and Community Engagement and a former health commissioner here in Baltimore, Maryland. Our goal with this podcast is to bring scientific evidence and experience to shed light on critical health issues. If you have questions or ideas for us, please send an email to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. Today, I catch up with Professor Andrew Pekosh, a virologist at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, on the latest about Omicron. Let's listen. Dr. Pekos, thank you so much for coming back to talk about Omicron. It has been only a few weeks since we first started in on this topic, but so much has happened. Absolutely. Uh, The pace at which we're um, seeing this Omicron surge go through the nation, in fact, the world, coupled with all the information that we're learning about this virus and how quickly we're learning it, has just been, you know, staggering. So let's, let's catch up on that information. When this first started, one of the questions was, is this more transmissible? And the early signs were yes. So now what do we know? Now it's abundantly clear that this is maybe even an order of magnitude more transmissible than any other variant that we've seen. And what's important to note is that increased transmission is occurring in people that have some level of immunity. So it's occurring in people who have been vaccinated. It's occurring in people who have previously been infected. So this virus is not only able to infect people who haven't had an exposure before, but it's able to infect people who have had some exposures before. And all that contributes to this case surge that we're seeing. Now, you're a virologist. So in your pre-pandemic life, you study viruses. What is it about this variant that makes it so transmissible and allows it to escape some of the immune protection that people might have? It's a complicated question. We know part of the answer. And that's the spike protein of Omicron, the protein that it uses to attach to cells, has a host of mutations that do probably two things primarily. One is they avoid the binding of antibodies to the protein. And in that way, it avoids that pre-existing immunity that the vaccines and previous infection have induced that should be protecting us. And then the second thing it's done is it's increased its ability to bind to cells within the respiratory tract. And that's probably a a compensation mode because to make all those mutations to knock out antibody binding sites, the protein is probably needed to compensate for that by binding to cells even more strongly. So that part of it is clear. Why we're seeing such a huge surge in cases, I think that that immune evasion is only part of the reason. This virus does appear to be doing something better in terms of its inherent ability to spread. And we just don't know what that is right now. It could be that it takes fewer infectious particles to start an infection. It could be that this virus has found a way to maybe spread in smaller particles, maybe in aerosols, and therefore people are getting a longer exposure than when this virus was only spreading through droplets. So we only know part of the story, but clearly, Something is new with this virus in terms of how it's behaving in the population, given all these cases that we're seeing. Let's switch to another aspect of the virus, which is its lethality. There were some initial signs that maybe this virus would not be as dangerous as other variants. What do we know? Well, I think overall in the population, we're seeing lower percentage of hospitalizations per infected cases of Omicron. So I think overall, that's a good sign that we're not seeing as much severe disease as we have seen with other variants. But the reasons for that are still not clear. Some of it could be the immunity in the population. So vaccines and previous infection may be preventing serious disease, but not preventing infection. Our hospital numbers are still showing the vast majority of people going into hospitals are unvaccinated. And so I think if you're vaccinated, you can, be, you can feel comfortable that you're going to most likely avoid severe disease. But if you're unvaccinated, I think that the jury is still out with respect to how dangerous this virus is for you. And I would err on the side of saying that if you're not vaccinated, this virus is probably just as dangerous as any other variant that we've seen so far. 
Got it. So in other words, people might misinterpret the news that fewer people are going to the hospital as a percentage of those infected. If they're unvaccinated, they may think, oh, well, that's lower risk for me, but it might not, not actually be lower risk for them. Absolutely. And I think that's the, the, the big concern that I have when I hear people talking about Omicron causing less severe disease is people shouldn't take that as a sign saying, oh, it's OK for me to get infected again because the disease isn't that severe. I think it's all modulated by the presence of immunity in the population right now. Got it. Now, most of the projections are for, you know, this astronomical number of cases that we're seeing in the United States here, for example, to persist maybe for a few more days to a couple of weeks um, and then a pretty sharp decline. Do you share that hope or expectation? And what do you think will happen on the other side of the surge? I think the data from many countries now is showing a sharp, a sharp spike. And then eventually as a, a steep a decline. I think in the US, we have to think about things more locally, because if we look at the numbers across the US, we may see a much longer surge across the US. But locally, we may be seeing those high spikes and then rapid drop offs. You know, we have to remember when we compare the US to a country like South Africa or United Kingdom, you know, we're much, much bigger than those countries and have much more sort of heterogeneic the spread of this virus across the country. So, but so far, everywhere the virus has gone, you've seen this rapid increase to really high levels of cases, but that's followed by a rapid drop. So I'm hoping that we continue to see that trend here in the US. Thank you. Now, I want to ask you a couple of questions about the, the future here. Um, one will be kind of with an optimistic pair of glasses and the other maybe with a more pessimistic pair of glasses. So tell me how you react to those. Some people are saying that while so many people are getting the Omicron infection, they're going to get some immunity from that, that this is actually going to put us in a much better position in the future for the COVID pandemic, that actually on the other side of this, we might see so much immunity in the population, we could even get close to population immunity or what some people call herd immunity. What's your thinking on that idea? I think there's clear data that shows if you've been vaccinated and then infected, you get an even stronger response in terms of your immunity than vaccination alone or infection alone. So I think there is something to be said for the fact that people who are vaccinated are going to get a really high amount of immunity if they do get infected. So that's the glass half full, I guess, part of this. And given the large number of cases that are occurring, I think that's going to be a very substantial part of the population. And my hope is that that immunity will make it much, much more difficult for us to see these kind of surges like we're seeing now with Omicron, because a good portion of the population will have some level of immunity, irrespective of how far out they are from their vaccine. And, and this is something that we've seen with influenza, another seasonal respiratory virus. It's that combination of vaccination plus infection that lowers the number of susceptible people in the population and therefore limits the spread of that virus during annual epidemics. Okay, well, that gives me some hope for 2022. But let me ask you my pessimistic question, which is that this variant demonstrates that we could be seeing some very different kinds of variants. This is the, the Omicron variant looks very different than some of the other earlier versions of the virus that we saw. Do you think that Omicron could mutate to become more lethal? Do you think that what we're really seeing is just one of a series of variants that could come in and escape some of the immune protection that we have and that we could be talking about the next letter of the Greek alphabet in a couple months. You know, it's difficult to predict anything with this pandemic, but I can say with as high a certainty as I could possibly state that I'm sure we will be seeing more variants in the future. What Omicron has shown us is it's almost shown us the complete other end of the spectrum of what SARS-CoV-2 can do with respect to how it looks and how it can invade the immune response. So there's a lot of space that this virus can still explore in terms of partially evading immunity. And so I think that we'll be seeing this virus go, you know, in the human population, we'll be seeing it change over time. But, you know, the vaccines are protecting against severe disease. And I think that's the most important thing to, that we can take from this surge is that we can find a way to limit that severe disease, and then we can use other tools to try to limit those acute infections that are taking such a toll on us in terms of the economy and the workplace. So we really can't put all our chips on optimism, but we can 
hope that we will continue to have a lot of protection, even if we get some more curveballs from Omicron and, and more generally from the coronavirus. Absolutely. And I think this surge is really going to be a turning point in terms of severe disease, particularly in, in vaccinated and previously infected people, because we will now have most of the population, either the easy way, vaccination first or infection, or the hard way, infection, and then followed by vaccination, getting this high amount of immunity that's going to protect us from severe disease and hopefully also from infection itself. Well, Dr. Pekos, thanks so much for doing yet another installment on Omicron and for all your help with the podcast since the beginning of the pandemic. My pleasure. Always happy to come on. Public Health On Call is produced by Joshua Sharfstein, Lindsay Smith-Rogers, and Stephanie Desmond. Audio production by Niall Owen McCusker, Matthew Martin, Spencer Greer, and Holly Cardinal, with support from Chip Hickey. Distribution by Nick Moran. Production support from Catherine Ricardo. Social media support from Grace Holes Fernandez. Thank you for listening. Thank you.